Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend Dion from Dion Talk. How you doing, buddy? Howdy. I'm doing great. I'm actually excited about this topic. Yeah, me too. So uh, the last year or so, you and I have been, um, I don't know, battling maybe uh, with Crash Bros. Uh, now uh, there seems to have been a pivot. Crash Bros are claiming victory, which I think is really odd, but okay. Now they're telling people, don't invest. Wait till 2024. Wait for this thing to uh, be over. And to which I, um, I say thank you for removing competition. Thank you very much for that. But I think this whole idea of waiting till 2024 and just pretending like 2023 didn't happen uh, is going to go down as a gargantuan mistake. But uh, I'd love to get your thoughts. Uh, I'm actually doing research for a video on my channel, and uh, I think the title is going to be Careful What You Wish For. Mm -hmm. For the last two years, people have been begging for it to stop being a seller's market, for the pendulum to swing to a buyer's market, and here you go. And nobody wants to buy anything. Pay attention. For it to be a buyer's market, buyers have to go away, or supply has to come, which is more likely. I don't think we're going to build 13 million houses in the next year. Um, more than we need, right? Mm -hmm. But buyers are going to go away because interest rates are up, lending gets tighter, prices are still up. So it is now becoming a buyer's market, which I think the wait till 2024 is going to be because prices might change. Great. Yeah. With 20, 10 or 12% interest rates, yeah, we'd probably see prices change. You're just going to pay more. In the buyer's market that we have now, instead of saying, I'm going to wait till 2024, the first thing we started with a couple of months ago is watch days on market. The second thing is, Seller concessions are now a thing. Oh, they yeah. didn't exist, right? The, the couple couple of years ago, it was let me name my kid after you. Yeah. Let me go over asking cash wave contingencies, and now it's buy down my rate. You pay closing costs. All kinds of options that just weren't available. Now this is the part. It's not a price buyers market, but this is the buyers market because buyers are disappearing. They're being priced out. They're, they're being feared out by people saying, you need to wait. I, I love the comments on Lumberjack's channel where the person said, basically, to paraphrase, the dumbest advice is to buy now because it can only go down in the future. Like people have been saying since 2013, when prices went above 2008. Um, and then every year there was a reason to wait. There is a, there, it's never felt like the right time to buy, ever. Every, everybody in 2011, it was like, we're at the bottom of the market. Must have been nice to buying then. Right. Most of us were alive in 2011, but we weren't buying because lenders had vanished. Nobody knew how far it was going to go down. Nobody knew it was the bottom. Um, we're going to see that now. Nobody yeah. knows it's the top. Nobody knows what's going to happen with rates. Yeah, this is first and foremost, the, the crash bros and now the wait to 2024 bros are amazing because they are getting paid and they're removing competition from my world, which is, I, I want to send them a thank you note. I'll send them a t-shirt, whatever they want. It's awesome. Again, 20, I have been through this a couple of times. The switch from a seller's market to a buyer's market is sudden. It is violent and people don't understand. And that's why I've been telling people I have this mental trick that I've been talking about for six months, and it is more true today than yesterday. I have a saying that says, there goes 2% of my competition. I will buy more deals out of the MLS in the next year than I have the last three years. I've looked at my market every day for three years online and gotten nothing. I close on an amazing deal tomorrow out of the MLS that was there for nearly a month. Everybody saw it. I got a 25% discount on the property off list price because I can close and, and close this month, hence October 31st. I done the math, my conservative expectations, and I will document the entire process on this channel. I'll make 32% on my deal, 32% cash on cash. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we'll document it. I close tomorrow. I'll show all the statements and uh, yeah, I just love the idea of it's a you know i want a buyer's market i want less competition congratulations it's here oh no it's a horrible time i'm gonna run away like you that's just wrong do the work like i said careful what you wish for yeah. we got it we've had buyer's markets before a lot of people weren't buying then 
Oh, no, I, I, I bought again, you, you were talking about 2011 or 12, not buying. You're absolutely right. I bought the whole way down. Right. So we, 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 my market got unaffordable. I wrote about all this in my book, one rental at a time. We do a 1031 exchange because we can't buy the ninth house, right? They don't make sense. And I don't want one of these stupid loan products. We spend about nine months, maybe a year, 1031ing into apartments. The world crashes. We own no houses. We have apartments. We're all good. Then on the way down, we start buying. I bought a house at 150, and then 130, then like 112, and then 98, and then 76, and then 76, then 61, then 58, then 44, then 37, then 32, then 28, and then 34, and 41, and 57. And you all weren't there. You all, I, I bought a house for $28,000. That was a house, not a lot. And you all thought it was going to go lower. I had my insurance company give me a bid or whatever it's called replacement cost. It was 187 grand. If you can buy something for 28,000 bucks and it costs 187 grand to rebuild, you're going to be okay. But everybody was gone. And what will it happen this time? Not the crash in prices as you follow my channel is not coming. However, terms, you will be able to negotiate terms today. That is amazing. I So there's a property. Again, this is all real time. The agent who helped me find the deal that I'm going to close Monday sends me a listing. $460,000. That's about what the value is. It's in, it's in livable condition, but not something that I'd be proud of. He goes, what do you want to offer? Remember, 460 or 470, whatever it was. I gave him two op options. I said, 205 grand cash. Or four hundred thousand dollars, ten percent down, and one thousand dollar a month payments for three hundred or for thirty years. If you do the math on that, that's zero percent interest. I don't expect him to take either one, but I'll be happy if he does. Otherwise, I'll find out what he's interested in. This is the time to get aggressive and write crazy offers. So that that's what I'm thinking today. So. For the naysayers and the, the you must wait and the crash is coming, people who are going to come in the comments below, feel free. Mm -hmm. I've heard people, I say heard, I've read in the comments, people say, we own the asset class. So of course, we're going to make videos saying we want the asset class to stay up. But that's literally what they say. We're, ju we're just promoting our own assets. Mm -hmm. So here's two things to think. Every fear crash video takes away 2% of the competition. That's your mental trick that you're using. Yep. Don't you think we would want less competition? So we would be making fear videos. If, if, if we were looking at our asset class versus our content, our content to, to better our asset class, we'd be making fear videos. And second, we own rentals. Yeah. Don't you think we'd be saying, everybody should wait till 2024, keep paying rent for the next year. Keep the demand up on the rentals so that we can see more rent increases in the next year. And then you can buy. And But next year, we'll have a new reason to delay it another year. Literally, the, the things that would benefit our businesses is the opposite of the content that we put out. So with that in mind, come at me, bro. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a couple of things I want to say about this. So first and foremost, if I was concerned about Olivia and I's whatever, portfolio or livelihood or whatever, I would create crash videos. Because clearly it pays. My channel is not growing as fast. My channel is one-tenth the size because I talk about doing the work. I don't accept average. I only talk about grade. I talk about daily discipline. I talk about things that are dirty words to most people. Most people want to have the lot want to win the lottery. I would rather earn it than win the lottery. Not that I would turn it away if I won, but I would rather earn it. Just it would feel better. Um, and then lastly. Uh, they just say it right now. If my word means something in the universe, I want Fresno to crash 75% like last time. I took huge advantage of it. I bought everything I could. I would buy 10 times as much this time. Please crash 75%. I would like nothing more. It would be great to win the lottery. It's better to earn it, but not for that self of a sense of accomplishment that someone like you probably has. For me, I, I never got a sense of purpose from work. I'm just weird that way. I'm the lazy person in my family, but it's repeatable. That swan, that sleep well at night ability comes from, if you win the lottery, 70% of lottery winners file bankruptcy within five years. Some statistic from the interwebs, which is never wrong, Abraham Lincoln. 
uh, people who earn fortunes and financial freedom and then lose it all, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I do my live streams every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, and members-only live streams are on Fridays. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.